You know, uh, what's amazing to me is, like you, I observe a lot that's going on. I try to listen sometimes to different hosts, try to watch my favorite cable channel from time to time, listen to commentators and so forth, and none of them have a solution to anything. Have you noticed that? You need to call your member of Congress, they tell you, when the president's acting despotically. Well, how is calling your member of Congress going to fix that? You call your member of Congress, and your member of Congress says, don't use the I word, impeachment can never happen. Okay. No power of the purse, no, 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 we don't want to shut down the government. Okay. So you've called your member of Congress. Now what? We'll vote. Okay, we're going to vote. And as I've talked about many times in the past, okay, we get the Republican Senate. Clearly better than the Democrat Senate, but it's headed by Mitch McConnell, should he win re-election. Mitch McConnell despises us. Mitch McConnell likes big government. Mitch McConnell is bought and paid for by the U.S. Chamber of Crony Capitalism. He's all for big government, as long as the government's doing what he wants it to do. He's been there forever. He's contributed to this massive debt. So what do you do? Well, vote in the Republicans. We voted in the Republicans. We voted in Bush. We voted in the House, the Senate, six years of Republican control. The second biggest increase in the debt in American history, only topped by Obama and a significant expansion of the reach of the federal government in a number of areas, including education and health care and so forth. So what do we do? In fact, it's even worse. A friend of mine told me that Paul Ryan was hosting a radio show today. I personally like Paul Ryan. You won't meet a nicer guy. So this has nothing to do with that or the fact that I think he's a good guy, and I personally like him. It's about public policy. Now, I'm only going by what my friend said, since I didn't listen to it, but in essence he said... I'm told there's no way to use the power of the purse unless it's for entitlements. His argument against defunding Obamacare is that it's the law and it's not an entitlement. What? Why, did they have entitlements when the framers were meeting in Philadelphia in 1787? Was that what they meant by the power of the purse? Entitlements? Only entitlements? They never heard of entitlements. Or at the state conventions, the power of the purse, the appropriations clause was only there to deal with entitlements? Let me read to you the Appropriations Clause in the United States Constitution, which I would think Paul Ryan and all the other members of Congress, particularly the Republicans, would be well aware of. No money shall be drawn from the Treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law and a regular statement and account of the receipts and expenditures of all public money shall be published from time to time. Gee, the word entitlement's not even in there. Do you notice? Then I did a little bit more digging. And don't worry, we're going to get to immigration. We always do. And we're going to get to the Middle East. And yes, Russia has invaded the Ukraine. Nobody else will say it, so I'll say it. Russia is launching a war against the Ukraine. So all the KGB sympathizers out there will be very pleased about that. But here's Federalist 58. Now, who wrote Federalist 58? James Madison. And I'm getting to a point, and I think it's a very, very important point. What do we do about all this? Listen to this from Madison. Tell me if he's limiting this to entitlements. And remember, he was writing his contributions to these papers, which we now call the Federalist Papers, as was Hamilton, as was John Jay. Madison and Hamilton writing most of them. But this was Madison's. The House of Representatives cannot only refuse but they alone can propose the supplies requisite for the support of the government. The government, departments, agencies, programs, entitlements, everything, anything. They, in a word, hold the purse. That powerful instrument by which we behold, in the history of the British Constitution, an infant and humble representation of the people, gradually enlarging the sphere of its activity and importance, and finally reducing, as far as it seems to have wished, all the overgrown prerogatives of the other branches of government. This power over the purse may in fact be regarded as the most complete and effectual weapon with which any constitution can arm the immediate representatives of the people, they mean the House of Representatives, for obtaining a redress of every grievance and for carrying into effect every just and salutary measure. This is a broad power. It is a significant power. As a matter of fact, Madison argued it's the most powerful part of the Constitution. 
which gives Congress the upper hand against the other branches. If the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, if the chairman of the Budget Committee, if the vice presidential candidate for president under the Republican banner last time around, if he doesn't understand the Appropriations Clause, the history around the Appropriations Clause, the debates that took place around the Appropriations Clause, then where the hell do we go for a solution? I've told you before, we need a new Republican Party every 20 or 30 years. That's what Reagan did, that's what he insisted on. Because they become entrenched, they denude themselves of power that the Constitution grants them against a reckless, lawless, imperial president. If you are going to minimize the power of the purse, unilaterally, or read it out of the Constitution, then of course the House has no power. This whole debate, and it's not even a debate, this discussion about shutting down the government, it's not about shutting down the government. It's whether or not Congress will use the power of the purse to insist that a president stop bankrupting the nation. I read to you what Madison said in Federalist 58, but it doesn't matter because the Republican leader of the Senate goes around campaigning for money, for votes, trying to assure anybody he can talk to, we will never shut down the government. It's a failed policy. They are contributing to destroying the United States Congress and your representation in the federal government. Here's what he said yesterday on CNN when questioned by a reporter by the name of Dana Bash. Cut one, go. Democrats are making a big deal uh, out of comments that you made uh, talking about the strategy that you would use if you became majority leader to use spending bills to change policy. And that, they, that, pretend that, you, did, that you didn't rule out a government shutdown. Stop. You'll use spending bills to change policy. That's what he's supposed to do. The power of the purse, which originates in the House, but still, obviously, the Senate has a role. Spending bills to change policy. Madison, the framers, Congress, Congress, you are supposed to have the upper hand when it comes to the power of the purse that's been granted to you. And what does McConnell say? Go. You just stay oh, right I now. did rule it out. I'm, I'm the guy that gets us out of shutdowns. Remember me? I'm the guy that gets us out of shutdowns. And, but that doesn't mean that Congress has an obligation to send appropriation bills to the president that are a blank check, which is the way it's been with the Democratic Senate. So just to make perfectly clear, you absolutely will not allow the government to shut down, either in the near future or if you become majority. Of course not. I mean, I'm the guy that's gotten us out of the shutdowns that some of our members have pushed us into in the past. Uh, that's, a, that's a failed policy. And that is a failed Republican leader. And this failed policy is the only policy that exists right now to control federal spending and an imperial president. And the Republican leader in the Senate voted into that position by a majority of the Republicans in the Senate. And the chief budget man in the House, Paul Ryan, nominated as the vice presidential candidate of the United States for the Republicans, have both taken the power of the purse, the appropriations clause in the Constitution, the all-critical appropriations clause in the Constitution, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 7, and have written it out of the Constitution. Not Obama, not Biden, not Harry Reid, not Nancy Pelosi, but Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. Now, what are we going to do about it? Well, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do about it. I'm not going to just sit here and whine and complain and woe is me. And I get the quote, well, what can the Republicans do? They can't do a damn thing. They've surrendered. They see this federal Leviathan as inevitable. They embrace FDR. They embrace LBJ. They embrace big government. But you don't. And because of what I was told that Paul Ryan said on his radio show today, that's why I've changed the direction of the first hour of my program for what I was originally going to discuss. Mark, what can we do? Mark. What can we do when I return?